Welcome to Brewing TV. I'm Michael Dawson. I'm Jake Keeler. What's in your, uh, what's your mug there, Keeler? Got a little espresso here. It's early in the morning. Need to get going. Espresso? Mm hmm. None more black. Sure. You know what else is none more black? Oatmeal stout. That's right. You know what would be none more cask? Put the oatmeal stout into a cask. You're way ahead of me. Yeah, we can use the life lessons we learned from Damian McCann over at Summit Brewing Company. Yeah. We can take some of the advice of Tim Sullivan, one of the cask dudes over at Northern Brewer. Yeah. And we can get to work. Yeah, let's make a priming solution. Sounds great, man. None more cask. All, all for, for brew. brew. Brew for, for all. all. What's in this espresso? <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine. Okay, we need to make some priming solution. Hell yeah. What are the specific measurements we're working with here? Got one pint of beautiful St. Paul tap water. Excellent. Four ounces of corn sugar. Damien was using a 15 Play-Doh wort, basically. Right. It was Golden Sovereign wort, which is about 1060 OG, and that was his priming solution okay. for those firkins. One thing he said that really stuck with me was you can err on the side of over carbonating a cask because before you tap it, you're venting anyway. So the you CO2 can is going out. Yeah, uh, compensate later on if you overcompensated at the beginning for priming. Okay. The last beer that was in that cask was put in by Northern Brewers Tim Sullivan. It was that, uh, that Mount Rainier bitter. Yeah. It's really tasty. It was really good. He used four ounces of priming sugar for that beer and I thought the carbonation level was yeah it was really pretty good. damn was, good so on. we're just gonna follow okay the trail that's already been blazed okay do you think that's uh, true with most beer styles you're gonna be putting in a cask yeah I I think that's a safe number General having rule having thumb. never tried this before I think it's totally <laughs> safe <laughs> and it's, with it's it. gonna, we're gonna go with it espresso in the morning <laughs> 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 None more black. None more black. Let's go put the beer in that wee pin. Watch your head, viewers. <coughs> Sanitizing bungs or <laughs> the keyhole. Whoa, whoa, the keyhole, the keystone, and the shive. Put the keystone bung in the keystone. And for that, we're going to need the hammer. Hammer time. Hammer of Mjolnir. That's good. We got the keystone in, mm -hmm. so the only opening left is the shive. We're gonna fill the wee pin with sanitizer and uh, just let it sit for a bit. We'll siphon the sanitizer back out. Then we'll put in our priming, beer, and finings. And then you'll have another opportunity to use the hammer of Mjolnir when, uh, when it's time to put the shive bung in or if the Midgard Serpent shows up. Sweet. Whichever one. What do I do if Loki shows up? Hammer that bastard. Yeah. We are dorks! Dorks or just really well versed in Adaic poetry from Scandinavia? Or jacked up on espresso? A little from column A, a little from column B, a little column from column C. C. Cask of sanitizer. Cask of sanitizer is all ready to drink, you guys. It's gonna be carbonated to an authentically low level of CO2. Just in time for the club only competition. Watch out, Quaff. Watch out, Doge. Watch out, St. Paul Homebrewers Club. We're coming to get ya. The sanitizer was made with very soft water in the style of Pilsen. Ooh wee! What up with that? What up with that? That's a small musky. What up with that? If there are any musky fishing guides that are watching Brewing TV that would like to be featured on an episode, possibly rowing us down the Chippewa flowage in a drift boat, maybe, please get in contact with us at brewingtv at northernbrewer.com. Just saying. We'll bring beer. All right, let's put the findings in. You want to do the honors, Mr. Keeler? Sure. Funnel out, funnel out. 
funnel out. Move, move, move. Cover your bunghole, Brewing TV. Yeah, cover. <laughs> never forget to cover your bunghole. Man, I should always start a Brewing TV shoot with three shots of espresso. Those were double shots, too, so six technically you had six shots. shots of espresso. You know what would be good? It's a uh, smoke meal stout with some espresso in it. Ooh, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I should go make a couple more shots while you hold this uh, auto siphon here. All right. All right. Out. I'm gonna do the icing glass now before the uh, siphon is totally finished so it gets mixed in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this particular wee pin is kind of cool especially from a homebrew perspective because its design doesn't require you to have like a, uh, a stillage right. to tap it. Uh, uh, and a stillage a just frame. for those aren't familiar with the terminology. Right. Stillage is basically the frame underneath yeah, the that cast. Holds. But this one, because the keystone where we're gonna drive the tap in in a couple of weeks is on the side and the shive is on the top, which is actually a reverse of the way most casks are designed. Uh, we can set this one flat just like this Sweet. without a stillage. It's totally cool. Damien talking yeah. about he was talking taking about the casks for a walk the around the brewery. Yeah. yeah. Get everything mixed up, agitated, rouse that yeast for a, a strong secondary fermentation. Yeah, over in England, in a lot of the uh, traditional breweries where they make a lot of cask ale, uh, or they, they cask a lot of their beer, they'll take the, the firkins and the pins out in the yard and walk them around, roll them along. Uh, to do exactly what Mike just said. This is Dawson's brew yard right here. None more black. Shut up already. This is stupid. If this was Germany, you wouldn't have to do all this manual labor. There would be Volkswagen robots to do it for you, and you would be drinking <laughs> a nice, crisp, clean lager. So now we can remove our espresso go. glass, yeah. like so. Look at that. Look at that. Now we have a an espresso infused oatmeal chocolate stout. Wow. It's the perfect antidote for six shots of espresso. I think so. Just a little more espresso with beer. Hey, so a couple weeks from now, we're going to vent the cask by driving a spile through the shive bung mm -hmm. and knock the tut into the cask. And then a couple days after that, we're going to tap it. So until then, grab yourself a beer. Sit tight. All right, Dawson, about two weeks ago, we put our oatmeal stout in the pin, we added our priming solution, and we added our finings. Yes. Now what do we need to do? It's been 18 days since we casked it, and now, a couple days before we actually tap it to drink it, we need to vent it. Okay. We're going to spile it in the shive bung. This is a soft spile, which is a more porous wood. We're gonna put that in, and this is actually, because it's porous, gonna let some of the CO2 that's built up escape to get us to an authentically low level of carbonation. After a couple days of venting, we're gonna replace the soft spile with a hard spile, a non-porous, harder wood in the same shive bunghole. We'll drive the tap through the keystone and we'll drink that sucker. So this is strictly to get rid of any excess CO2 that's built up in the pin or firkin. Yeah, yeah, right. it's the last stage of the maturation process and there's a few different programs that you can follow. You can read about them in this book. Some pubs will tap on the same day they vent. Um, some won't vent until they tap the beer when they need it. 
they will vent it and just leave it for several days uh you know and only tap it once they they need it okay. we're gonna follow uh what what tim did and what i think damien has recommended if i remember right which is just to vent it let it sit a day or two and then tap it and all along the way you need to have espresso in hand to do this correct? absolutely none more black none more cask you can tell the weather's changed because there's ice at jake's yeah it's getting warmer so i see that you've uh Throwing the soft spile into some sanitized solution. Just, just on principle. Get a little stars in here, and I'm also going to pour it on the tut, which is the center part of the shive bung, since that's getting knocked in ah. by the spile. That's actually going to be rattling around inside of this cask okay. until the beer is gone and we clean it out. We've only got one chance to do this for the camera. So I hope it's dramatic. It might spray. It might hiss. Hmm. Hmm. One other thing Damien said that stuck with me is that you don't want to really whack the spile in so hard that you can't get it out. Because mm. we do want to replace this one with a hard spile in a couple days. So the CO2 stops escaping and goes out with the beer. Gotcha. Through our tap or beer engine or however we decide to dispense it. Okay. Here we go. Ready? It smells pretty nice. Ah, oh, it does. Really eggy and yeasty. <laughs> now this will act just like a cork and essentially let some of the CO2 out, mm -hmm. but for the most part protect oxygen from getting in. Right, as long as there's um, positive pressure in the cask. It's been about 20 minutes and now you can see the gas evolving through the pores in that spile. It's super rad. It's doing it again. Look Ooh, at it. It's damn, going look at nuts. That. All right, this, all right. The spile has croisin. <laughs> it does. That's about all there is to do today. We've moved okay. on from espresso to beer. We'll be back here in two days' time to tap the cask, tell you what the beer tastes like. Stick around. It sounds fantastic. It is. It, you know, it does sound fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. We're here two days later in Dawson's basement and we're getting ready to tap the pin. That's right. Two days ago we spiled it. Later that night I came down to check on it and there was a little mushroom foam coming up through that porous soft spile. I cleverly did not take any pictures of it. Perhaps Jake can do a pictorial illustration. It was just like that. So I replaced the soft spile with the hard spile. That's where we're at now. This is Tim Sullivan, one of Northern Brewers cask dudes, who we mentioned earlier in the episode. Tim, we're going to tap it today. What do I need to know to not screw it up? Well, it sounds good. At this point, there's not a whole lot. Uh, you've got it vented already. Uh, <clears throat> you'll want to keep the hard spile in when you tap it. Uh, that way it kind of creates a suction in here. You don't have beer gushing out. Right. Uh, that's about it, though. That's all there is to it. Yeah, it's pretty simple. And um, then once you once you have it tapped, you'll take this hard spile out to remove that suction, so you can actually get the the pour beer the beer out of the cask. We're just gravity feeding from this pen. We're yep. not using a beer engine or anything. It's real lo-fi and yep. nice. Same thing they were doing hundreds of years ago. Turn on the tap. Turn off the tap. Drink beer. Sweet. I think I can do that. Hope this isn't too messy. I've got simple spigot tap here sanitized. Make sure it's off. Oh, dude, watch my kettles. I'm gonna put it in the keystone. Hammer of Mjolnir. Tim, any, any last words? That's it. You'll wanna probably ma uh, make sure that uh, you've got that uh, support bar back there. <clears throat> you want either something or someone back there to provide some kind of support so you don't push the pin With my mighty John Henry-like blows, I don't send the cast through the other wall. Exactly. All right. 
Here we go. Spout, spout, let it all out. This is how we will drink the stout. Come on. Spile. Yeah. Look at that. It actually that's, worked. That's awesome. Got some good condition in there. Mm hmm. Good head on the beer. Followed your advice. Gather around, finish that yellow drink. Have some black drink. Black Smells and pretty good. Baby. Black and yellow. Black and yellow. Come and get it. Isn't that a Lil Wayne song? Black and yellow. <laughs> it is a meeting. You're taking a minute. Thanks for all the hard work, Mike. Hey, no Yay. problem. Gather around. <laughs> yeah. There you go, Tim. There you go, Garth. <laughs> all right. Yay, me! <laughs> this one should be for uh, Mike there. Oh, okay. I get a beer? Thanks, guys. So now, Mike, here's the real question. We gotta drink this, right? I mean, we, we haven't let this sit around for too long. Tim, what's our lifespan? Well, since it's exposed to air, you should probably drink it in a day or two. Uh, it's not gonna last forever, but uh, that's usually not a problem. <clears throat> Actually, Tim, I'm gonna have to stop you there and correct you. Uh, there is a way to preserve the beer in the cask. For longer than two days, just in case you were wondering, you're doing it wrong. Simply requires an aspirator valve. Maybe you've heard of it. It supplies a trickle of CO2 to the cask, never more than atmospheric pressure so the beer does not get carbonated. Now, I had to uh, improvise this demonstration on short notice thanks to Brewing TV's ignorance, so you'll have to imagine that it's hooked up with tubing here to your CO2 supply, a cylinder and a regulator, and this is, acts as a secondary regulator to never supply more than atmospheric pressure CO2. The beer in the cask will not be carbonated, but it has the salubrious preservative effects of excluding oxygen. And this is just a simple barrel spigot, replaces the hard spile in the shive bung during dispense. And this is also connected by tubing. So you get tubing here and tubing here, a regulator over here, and the cask here with your beer that can be consumed indefinitely. Nerd rage! You guys should really take a week off and research your facts a little better. That segues nicely into my next topic. No episode June 17th. Oh! We're going to be sleeping one off, but not because of the pin, because we will be at the National Homebrewers Convention. Yeah, so no episode June 17th, but do expect updates, short pours, and whatnot on our Facebook page. So if you want to follow along with us while we're out at the NHC uh, the week of... Get on Facebook, Grandpa. That's or right. Grandma. <laughs> and hopefully by then, the new Brewing TV work shirt will be available at Northern Brewer. Oh, hey, doesn't that look nice? Check that out. <laughs> <laughs> with friends like these, I don't think we should have a problem finishing off this pin in less than a day or two. I hope so. You guys, you got your work cut out for you. That's right. All right. All for brew. And brew for all. all. Brew for all. all right. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Ching, ching. Cheers. Cheers. None more cask. None Cheers, more Chippy. cask. Cheers, Chippy. Cheers, guys. Ting. We damn near forgot to tell you what it tasted like. I'm here with Tom Phelan and Tim Sullivan, both from Northern Brewer. And guys, this is the oatmeal stout partial mash kit done by the book. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think it's great. It's really nice, coffee-ish, roasty. Tastes like oatmeal stout. Mm-hmm. Nice. Little, little bit of bready esters from the Neo Britannia yeast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that yeast gives a lot of fruity flavors. I see that in this one. What do you think the cask does for it? Well, it's definitely a. It's at cellar temp. We pour it right from your cellar. Mm-hmm. So that brings a lot of that kind of fruitiness and stuff Tom was talking about out. Yeah. Um, the low carbonation also lets some of that roastiness come through, I think, without covering it up with some of that, car you know, carbonic bites. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I think that low carbonation really helps a lot. I, I probably wouldn't have even notice that it was low carbonation, you know, 
if I didn't know that that was the style for cask beer, but it, it really brings everything out a lot more. I think it does really nice things for the silkiness of the, the oat texture. Yeah, yeah, oatmeal stout's thick enough on its own that it doesn't really need, uh, need much else. It drinks like a meal. Hi, Garth. Thanks, guys. Now we are saying goodbye for reals. All for brew. Brew for all. Brew for all. Brew for all. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> brew for me. Hey. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> All right now lads, there's still some foam in our wee pin. Let's put it back over the secondary star sign container. Give up your English ways, home brewers. Why don't you make lager all the time? In my country we say brew for all, and brew for all is, is according to regime. Is a uh, <laughs> Ruin TV vodka glass. Woke up in the morning, drink a stout. What up with that? I'm bugging out! All for brew, brew for all. Highly technological piece of equipment that uh, isn't commonly found in the US. Mikhail and Jacob. You make learn many things. Beat beer. They go to one state owned brewery after the other. Scandinavian Germanic immigrants didn't come here to drink oatmeal stout. Look at this, come on. This is a free country. They are pretty nice. They are nice. And they support brewing TV. <gasps> Blam! Now we're really saying goodbye. All for brew. Brew for all. Brew for all. all. Uh, that up. <laughs> you can't say <laughs> that on TV, can you? All for brew. Brew for all. What up? <laughs> <laughs> you want to do another one just in case? <laughs>